My name is Antti Kosunen. I'm co-founder and CEO of uh, Earthster. And I'll, I'll be guiding you through this half an hour today. I'll be explaining to you uh, what are industry scale environmental impact assessments, what, why, it, why it matters and how can you do it in a way like it should be done today. And what we have created is a, a tool that uh, does LCA, does environmental impacts 10 times faster. It can be even 100 times faster, much, much different way than it has been before. And all of that is done in, in collaboration with, uh, with the supply chain. And also it, has, it, it will be done in, uh, with an experience that is totally different what it used to be. Even though it's solid data, solid science behind it, the look and feel is, is like a video game, so it's fun to use. Uh, and one of the reasons why it's fun is because it's so effective. You immediately get to see that where are the areas that really matter, and then you can refine those and only those. So using your time effic efficiently as, 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 as efficiently as, as possible. And uh, today, uh, Greg Norris, who has been teaching uh, this in uh, in Harvard and MIT for many, many years. He will be talking about the why. So why it matters today, why it is a must that all the corporations do this. And uh, then Daniel will be showing how it can be done in, in practice so that it's, it's actionable. Daniel also has a background in, from university, been, te been teaching eco-innovation at, um, at the best university in Spain. But now it is Greg's turn. Greg, please let us know why, the, why there's a need for environmental assessments. All right, thank you, Antti, and uh, thanks to everyone for joining us uh, here today in this session. And I'll try to do exactly what uh, Antti uh, mentioned, which is to explain um, why we need a transformation in life cycle assessment. Um, and to do that, I'm just going to take a look at what's uh, happening in the field of life cycle assessment just in the last year or two and what it what this news tells us about uh, where life cycle assessment is headed. The first thing many of you may have noticed is that uh, suddenly you or another company that you've met or spoken with needs a life cycle assessment. And this includes many companies that have never heard of life cycle assessment until uh, just this year or last year. Just to give you one among countless examples that I've come across lately, um, companies that sell uh, e-scooter services. So Spin is a great example. They set up a, a e-scooter system in the city and uh, they're finding that cities all over the world, not just in a particular continent like Europe, but both in Europe and North America so far, um, they need to provide each of these cities with a life cycle assessment. Now, uh, it's not that the, the, the global union of cities decided this. It's actually a set of regional requirements that have led to independently led to these cities requiring e-scooter systems to provide life cycle assessments. Another example is if you're selling components or even basic materials to major brands, including Apple, Patagonia, uh, and, and hundreds, if not thousands of others, you also are finding that you suddenly need a life cycle assessment for what it is you're selling to your customer. So, this we can consider this growth, believe it or not, to just be the tip of the iceberg of growth in LCA scale. And uh, I'm going to explain why. But first, let's think about this tip. Um, what we see is that big brands and governments, cities, countries, and continents are requiring it of their suppliers. And but here's why I say that's just the tip. When we go to find out why this tip of growth is happening, here's what we learn. In some cases, there's just a new requirement for a life cycle assessment. And the city example is a great example. It's a lot like the 
demand for environmental product declarations and life cycle assessments that support them that we've seen in the green building space for the last 10 to 15 years. But in many other cases, what you have is footprint reduction goals that have been set by companies that are being communicated publicly out to the world. And you have people sitting at desks or sitting at home at a desk uh, working for these companies whose performance uh, review um, is tied to how they help their company meet uh, the goals of targets to reduce their footprint that the company has set. So one example of the kinds of targets that companies are setting publicly and doing so with at an exponentially growing rate are science-based targets on climate change. You may also be aware that Science-Based Targets Initiative is now broadening its focus to include other science-based targets for nature. Um, what this is leading to is the exponential growth of targets times the number of uh, suppliers that they have. That's the exponential growth in LCA we're seeing so far. And that's only gonna get, um, continue to increase because you're starting to see major markets, um, in, including federal purchasing, recommending requiring science-based targets from their major suppliers. But here's why even that's just the tip of the big iceberg. What we saw is that these companies are not just asking for an LCA, they're asking for progress. Um, and so progress, you could say, is the new green. And this is demanding life cycle assessment to move from a fossil approach, a static approach, to a much more dynamic, flexible, what we call living life cycle assessment approach. Fossil LCA is what we've had for 50 years. It's what the ISO standards for life cycle assessment conceptualize and standardize LCA as being. It's the development of a life cycle assessment expressed as a report, as a document. And it's effectively a snapshot in time of the life cycle environmental impacts of a product over its life cycle. In order to perform one of these LCAs, you can use data from best available databases uh, like EcoInvent and Gabby and the others um, that you'll hear about today in order to build a static model of your supply chain built out of these uh, snapshot data building blocks. But as we've seen, companies are now demanding not only that they create progress this year, but they continue to create and report progress on an annual basis in order to meet these targets that they're publicly communicating. And that leads us to the need for setting up a dynamic, flexible structure through which information can flow from your supply chain on through you to your customers. So that basically you can say to your customer, not only are we providing a greener product this year, um, but we're providing a product that's backed up by a, a network uh, of data that's continuously driving and reporting on beneficial changes so when you buy from us, you're not only buying green today, you're buying the promise of ongoing green innovation and ongoing reporting, uh, up-to-date reporting on that progress that you can use to report to your stakeholders. Now, let me just mention one more thing. For LCA to be, go from fossil to living, for it to meet this challenge, um, it can no longer look like the screenshot on the bottom right there. It can't just be a tool for nerds that sort of have this no pain, no gain ethic. It has to be something that anybody in your company is not only willing, but even reasonably eager um, to, to sit down and use and to quickly get insights and be able to communicate effectively with the outside world or with their colleagues in your company what is it? What is the information that we need? What does our life cycle look like now? And what does it need to look like tomorrow? So there's the need for LCA to span your supply chain outside your organization, but also to span the social and collaboration networks inside your company. 
So with that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Daniel to give us a look uh, at Erster in action. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Mm -hmm. Hey, I, before going giving the stage to Daniel, I guess I'm stating the, the self-evident. Old systems are old. That's what they actually are. They are the fossil systems that uh, you can do an autopsy with them. But if you actually want to create the greener future, having the living LCA systems, then you should be using, uh, using Erzger. And uh, somehow the feeling of having the latest data in a compatible uh, form, having the right data from your suppliers in a way that you can use it immediately so that it's actionable. And that is the theme for Daniel's uh, presentation. Daniel, please. Thank you very much, Antti. So I, I'm, I'm going to start, before jumping straight away in the tool, I wanted to share a, a semi-quote because I shortened it uh, from a conversation that, that we had with a, an, an industry uh, uh, conversation. So we were, we were talking with a company that's, that's performing environmental assessments and we were showing Erster and then they, they had an aha moment. Uh, and he verbalized in a way that I very much like. He said, ah, of course, in the center of our model is our product, but everything around it, every input to it, every, every process that I use is someone else's product. It's the center of the world for somebody else. And, uh, and uh, I, I feel that that captures very much one of the difficulties that we have in LCA and one of the things that, that has inspired us to do Erster. And that is that uh, as an LCA practitioner, you end up modeling your things, you end up modeling what you know, and you end up modeling what others give you that you don't know as well. And uh, if, um, uh, if it's very relevant, you may go and ask them, but it's still you making a model of somebody else's, uh, uh, somebody else's situation. So uh, I'm going to jump straight away to the, to the demo. So I'm going to show you the, the beta of our product. And this is how it looks like. Uh, I'll very quickly show you one of the products. You, you see the different life cycle stages with their relevance, and it immediately draws your attention to those that are, that are bigger, that, are, that have a bigger impact. In this, space, in this case, they're quite balanced. Uh, so I'm going to go straight away to production. And, uh, and then you have here in this panel, the details. Now, one thing that you, you, that you probably notice is that it, it looks probably more like a video game than a conventional LCA software. Uh, and that's on purpose. So we want it to, uh, to feel friendly and playful so that people are encouraged to, uh, to do different things there. And the, the core of my, my quick presentation is going to be three areas. Uh, so the message is that if you want to do LCA at scale, so not if you want to do one particular scenario or one particular uh, model of a product, but you want to do that scale. You want to eventually have all your products and you want to have all your supply chain. And, and that's a big scale. Uh, then you need to reduce the marginal time to do another LCA. Uh, you need to do things in a way that, uh, well, three things basically. You need your data to be connected so that you model things once and, and things plug with each other easily. And, uh, and you don't need to keep many things updated, but you, you have basically, like, like in real life, the, the processes happen once, so you keep them in one place. You need everything to be connected. And that applies to your company, but it also applies to, uh, to your suppliers, different departments, et cetera. Then you need data to be comparable. You need to be comfortable that uh, whatever people do, it's going to be similar. It's going to be comparable. You can, you can use that data. And finally, you need to be actionable. You need to be able to do things very quickly and still drive some level of results. So starting with the connected, uh, here, here in, you see the interface. Uh, I'm going to order by climate change, for example, the, the different processes. And uh, one, thing that, uh, one thing that I want to point out is that I can modify any of these values and it's changing my cycle. Uh, so now I change it, you see that I've left, the results have changed a little bit. Uh, but this chemicals model, this process that I picked from the database, uh, that has stayed unchanged. Now, in addition to that, whoever owns that process could modify that. In this case, it's from the database. So it's uh, Earth to May modify it. Uh, but the beauty lies here. When I go here to add a new process and I, and I write something, I'm gonna say, for example, electricity, uh, I'll, I'll, I get here the, the, the results. At the moment, this shows uh, 
LCA databases, so the, the best available data from the databases. But as your suppliers populate the, the database, and as other people's suppliers populate the database, it also shows uh, the information that they've chosen to share with you, uh, which the end results end up being part of that information. So you can pick not only I go, I'm going to be using electricity, but electricity by this uh, energy provider or from this plant, if I have that type of agreement. So you can you can nail down your, your specific impact, not to this is the average electricity grid in uh, in Switzerland for the for the model that we're looking, but this specific contract that I have with my electricity provider, which may or may not buy the average electricity mix. Um, so in that case, you can make your data a lot more specific. And uh, why I emphasize that it's connected is because I'm not bringing a file and included it in my model and and then it's fossil, like like Greg was saying, but I'm I'm actually connected to that cycle, so that when they modify, they do a new version, I get updated. I, I know that there's new data, and I can keep my LCA fresh constantly, so I can track my progress and the progress of everybody upstream, everybody in my supply chain. Uh, then the the second thing that I want to show, I said it has to be comparable, and uh, and why I emphasize this is because in in LCA we have a, a number of um, of concepts a number of terminology that, that requires people to learn LCA, so to say. And, and some of them are, are necessary, so we're facing that, but some of them are, are abstractions that most people will not want to jump in, at least to start with. Uh, so that's why the, the way we've, uh, so we, we've been very careful with picking words that, that uh, are easier to grasp. And we're, we're doing tests with this to see if, if they're really understandable. For example, we have the different processes, so the different uh, inputs, materials, uh, industrial process, etc., and emissions and resources. Uh, very commonly, these get aggregated as, as flows, and then that's a level of abstraction that, uh, that we've seen makes it difficult for some people. And, and in here, from the templates, we've loaded a, a lot of data so that they already start, uh, they already start with, um, they have a good starting point uh, on, on what they should be looking at. So if they don't know, then it will take the default for their, their product category. So that means that there's always already a minimum of data that, that people are going to include. And then whatever they modify, it's always for the better. And, uh, and finally, the last piece that I want to show is, is when you create a new product cycle, because I said that it has to be actionable. It has to be fast. Uh, so you need to be able to get some results fast and then prioritize your efforts. Uh, so when you create a cycle, uh, I'll, I'll go here and um, so I'll, I'll make a test. Uh, when I select, uh, so I can select from here the different types of, uh, um, of commodities. And then when I select that, it's going to give me an average template for this. So if I, for example, I'm modeling steel, I can say ferrous metals, I'll call it steel just to make it proper. And I'll click very quickly, um, but uh, then I already have a starting point. I can navigate the different templates. I can select which one fits. And then I already have data for, for my model. Uh, so that means that uh, everything loads instantly. You can change things very quickly and you can focus your attention on those impacts that are bigger so that you end up with 80% good model or 90% or 99% good model instead of forcing people to generate a complete model from the beginning and before they have uh, a baseline result. And that's all that I have to, to show you for the moment. I'm very much looking forward to the questions and to the, the discussion that, that happens here forth. So thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel. What, what Daniel just showed us is a, a tool that you get the same average assessments uh, free of charge now that you get with the old systems in, in three months and paying 20 to 50K for it. And then you have also have to hire ex experts on doing it. And then when you continue refining it, then you get a better accuracy. And uh, then you get that 10 or 100 times faster uh, or instantly in the future, because then you always have the latest data available. So moving from fossil to, to living LCA. And, and it uh, compounds because the, the first time when you get your suppliers, it may be 10 times faster, but as you have more percentage of your suppliers in, it goes hundred times or, or more faster. Mm -hmm. Very true. 
Hey, we booked the last uh, 10 minutes for for a chat, for answering your, your questions that you may want to be writing them on, on the on, on, on chat. And uh, and then when we have answered questions there, then we'll then hopefully Greg will allow you also to speak and then we may have a, a live chat. But there are some questions there. Uh, Daniel or Greg, would you be do you want to answer, take those? Two good questions already from Alessandra. Um, Daniel, feel free to, to address that first one. I, I, can, I can jump in. Uh, so it says, uh, the user inputs data in US dollars. Is there an input output model in the background? Uh, yes, and uh, <laughs> that's, that's always the best answer. Um, so at the, mom, at the moment we have implemented uh, UCO, uh, database as a as, as a commodity database for the templates, and we're also now working on importing XCO base so that that we have multiple geographies. Uh, and that's why, hence the currencies. Uh, then we also have EcoInvent, and if you're familiar with EcoInvent, that's process based information. So there you have information per kilograms, per kilowatt hour, per ton kilometer, whatever the unit matches closely or how the impacts actually get get generated. Uh, so, so in that sense, the units depend on which process you're picking. And if, when you're modeling your own cycles, when you're picking a supplier cycle or your own, then uh, I haven't gone through it, but we've, uh, we've actually tried to, we've actually simplified the way you define functional units uh, in a way that you can define production units, which would be similar to echo invent, uh, spend units or economic units, which would be similar to input output, and then additional functional units. So that you, when you select one of those processes, you can pick which one of the units uh, is, uh, is, the, is the one you have better information about and therefore the, the best one for you to use. Mm -hmm. The next question that she had um, related to validation, verification, uh, data quality, Maybe I'll just, there's other really interesting questions coming in too, Daniel. So check those out. Um, we definitely, um, a big part of Erster's vision, by the way, is that we are setting up partnerships with service providers. So we're not as a team out to also provide consulting. We're out to really super empower uh, a growing body of consultants, existing and future consultants, and that's both in delivering LCA related services, making use of that information, uh, but also verification validation of your results uh, and data. And we, um, we use uncertainty quantification as a core uh, functionality as well. So you'll, when, as you look at the data available, is ranked in order of lowest uncertainty in practice because it's the most appropriate data for your particular application. And um, Daniel didn't show it, but the graphs um, have the ability to turn on display of uncertainty and um, improve, show the improvement in uncertainty that's resulting from your modeling over time, including that results from uh, substitution of supplier specific data in place of generic data. Hey, may uh, I answer, may yeah. I answer one? Uh, you're asking how can one get access to this platform? Uh, you have received an email from Raquel. Please reply to her and say that you want to get an access. We'll start uh, inviting uh, users to our beta version uh, 1st of July. So send her an email and we'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll jump to the next question. Avantika is saying, we have a large number of components, et cetera, and other ERP systems where these are managed. An integration with other ERP systems, BOM importing, et cetera, becomes really necessary feature in doing things fast. Uh, we, we have a roadmap of features. Uh, for example, bill of materials importing is, uh, is, is very high on the priority list and, and also integration. So we've, we've done it in a way that is very, our, our platform from day one speaks robot. That, that's the, the silly way in which I say it. Uh, we, we've had to import all that data and we wanted to make our own lives easier. So that means that it, it understands different formats already and, uh, and um, it's modular enough that we can implement other formats. So, so that means that making the import process smooth is something definitely on our roadmap. At, at the moment, we import things in the background, uh, but progressively we will, we will be opening, uh, opening more and more of those 
uh, to, to the end user to be doing with a nice interface. Mm -hmm. um, Alessandra had a follow-up question um, about the uncertainty, which was a, a really good one. Uh, she's effectively asking it, when you when Erster provides the user with information about uncertainty, is that strictly addressing the uncertainty inherent in the database, um, or does it also does it uh, relate to essentially the relevance, the appropriateness, the goodness of fit of the data for your particular uh, application? And as Daniel said, the the answer is yes. Um, <laughs> to both. Um, we, we really recognize the need to address not only the background uncertainty in the data, but very much also the LCA in practice. It, it, data may be uh, uncertain. Let's say you might have high quality data that's still a poor fit for what you need. And so effectively in application, it's going to have a low, it's going to have a low focus, a high uncertainty. And Erster is, is designed to address both of those uh, drivers. Yeah. And may I comment for, for a moment on uh, on what you said now, uh, sure. Greg, because uh, we have started using the word focus instead of uncertainty, even though uncertainty is commonly used in, in LCA circles. Uh, the reason is that uh, there's more layers than just the pure uncertainty from the data that, that gets mm -hmm. used. So you have different layers of, uh, of elements that make your, makes your data fuzzier for the case at hand. Uh, as, as in the op blurrier, the opposite of being focused for the case at hand. Uh, mm -hmm. So we started using focus as a way to aggregate those different um, those different phenomena. Like the data is not the right shape, but it's the best shape available, <laughs> or or the data is the right shape, but is old, or it's it's or we know that it's outdated, or many different layers uh, that can make that data less focused for the issue at hand. And then by combining those, we can uh, we can show you different bits of data and which one is the the one that will fit the case the best. Mm -hmm. Great. We have uh, some other questions coming in. It, it really interesting one there on um, on uh, data sovereignty, how uh, users manage the data and relate it to trust and collaboration. I, I can jump to that one if you want. Sure. Uh, so we've, we've considered uh, distributed ledger technology. Uh, we, we haven't really done anything in that, in that space at the moment. Uh, but what our vision is actually, rather than, than limiting the data, exposing much of the data. Uh, so encouraging the companies to, at, at the very least, expose their results uh, so that others can use it as, a, as their, their input. Uh, but, but also in some cases expose the whole model so that the, the rest of the, uh, the community can learn and make better models. So in, in that sense, for example, for some companies that may be very challenging, uh, but for academic exercises and the like, if you want to share your LCA, you may actually want to share the full LCA in a way that others can look at it. Mm -hmm. Hey, I think that was the last question that we have time to answer. So we are all, unfortunately, we only had this half an hour to uh keep your for the respect of your time so a very quick uh, events like this will be arranged also in the future we are very happy to discuss with you so if you are a consultant wanting to do project with us because we are a database company we are a technology company we do not serve the serve the customers ourselves but we collaborate with consultants so Please poke us. Like I said, Raquel, Raquel will be the contact point, send her messages, and we are more than happy to discuss. If you are I, I, I corporation, uh, then uh, at this stage, we do discuss with you. We are more than eager to hear what it should be. And then at the end, you end up doing those analyses yourself or together with some of the consultants. Uh, and uh, very happy to be connected with uh, as many as possible. And uh, I guess the final words is, is uh, uh, what we have said before. So moving from fossil to living LCAs is moving from autopsies to creating greener, designing greener businesses that you guys will be. Thank you very much for this one. Goodbye. Thank you. Have a great day.